one was wrong. All right, we got this one in. Let's go ahead and uh, write it, and uh, hopefully we won't crash anything. Right, currently loaded uh, ROM to ECU. So we've got all the scaling set. Hopefully this works. Key should already be in the ignition on. Yep, here we go. We're cycling. Writing the uh, ROM to the ECU. This should hopefully scale the injectors correctly, at least close enough to, to run the car. To be honest, I already ran it, and uh, yeah, it was pig rich at idle because it still thought it had stock injectors, but it did start and run. Ooh, Eric Swalwell just farted on camera. <laughs> All right, success. Let's go ahead and see if this puppy starts. Sounds a lot better. Come on, wide band. Finish warming up. You're already warm. Way too rich. Should be in the 14s. Let's see if it steadies out as the car warms up a little bit. Well, that's our problem right there. It's still running way too. Right, the pressure is way too high, even with the mod. We're above 60, that's not good. And get that sucker dropped down. Well, the good news is, is that I don't see any fuel leaks. Um, back here or there. Don't smell any fuel, so that's a good sign. I mean, I don't smell any unburnt fuel. It is definitely running rich, so you can smell it in the back, but it doesn't smell like unburnt fuel leaking anywhere. So, I didn't really show the installation of some items that I added. So, I obviously, in the original video, I didn't have a pressure gauge on here. I also added this fuel filter in line, so I replaced that feed line going to the rail. Added adapter fitter for the gauge. Um, adjustable fuel pressure regulator from Radium. I also went ahead and got their damper. It's also teed onto the back line just to finish things off. Um, and then I just bought a return hose and a clamp and their fitting to just go back to the normal return. So that's all plumbed in. Unfortunately, because of the restriction in the return line right now, the fuel pressure regulator is not working. I mean, basically I can't adjust it below 60. I could probably go higher, but that's not going to do me any good. I need to get this down to like 45-ish, 50, maybe max. So we're going to have to take that fuel pump housing out and figure something out because that's just not going to work in the long term. Um, for now, though, I'm going to go ahead and run it and see how much it adjusts the fuel trims and uh, go from there. All right, guys. So... We still have an issue with the fuel pump and the return line is just too restrictive can't drop the base pressure below 60 psi so we got to make some changes and i'm gonna have to pull the fuel pump back out now i thought to myself <laughs> there's one thing i probably should change and that's the wiring so I, I ran the wiring in the previous video and uh i soldered it directly to the fuel pump i should have put a connector on it so what i'm going to do is i got this uh still a little hot Dean's connector, RC style, that I'm gonna throw down there to connect the fuel pump to the wiring. These can handle 30 amps, no problem. In fact, they can handle a lot more than that. So I'm gonna use this to uh, make a connection for my wiring so I can unplug it whenever I need to. So let's go ahead and start.
All right, we'll shrink these uh, connectors in a little bit. But for now, let's go ahead and move it out of the way. So I think what I'm going to try first, and we'll see if this helps, is I'm going to actually take the filter out. All right, I've gotten the filter out. We're just not going to use this. I think I might go and take this and port this a little bit bigger. Although I think we're gonna leave this one as is approximately. All right, well, I drilled it out, I've removed the filter. Let's hope that that's enough to take the restriction away. Let's go ahead and put this sucker back in the car. Everything looks like it's connected. Let's go try this again and see if we can get that fuel pressure dropped to where it's supposed to be. Alright, so we managed to finally get the fuel pressure down to a reasonable level. It's right at around 45-ish. Hard to see because of all the damn glare. Here we go. About 45. Got the fuel pressure down, so we're good there cars idling. Um, I believe my wide bands at least one point off because it's been in the 12s. But we've been sitting on ECU flash and I'm sorry Evo scan sitting here with the live data logging and uh, I'm just washing the fuel trims. So I've got a long-term fuel trim right now and I've been averaging right around 2.7 so it's only pulling a little bit of fuel the fuel trim for the short term, if I can get this to click, and I unclicked it. Let's try one more time. Has been right around uh, 2.6. Yeah, 2.5 ish right at the moment. So it's about the same. That's really not, it's not subtracting a lot of fuel. Um, do I still have Evo? Flash open, no. Okay, let's open that real quick. Um, so I've settled on, um, I think it was around 975. Let's go ahead and open this file. Injector scaling. 975 cc's per minute. I'm using numbers for the voltage compensation that are very much similar to um, you can see a nice curve there those are similar to what I found on the injector dynamics website for 45 psi ish um, I scaled the injectors 1085 divided by 1.15 as per Merlin's tuning manual and right now it seems to be working at least for the idle I'm gonna have to do more logging at cruise to see how that goes and uh, but before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, replace the wideband and recalibrate it. I just happen to have a new sensor here, so um, everybody's asked me what wideband I'm running because people have seen it in the videos and no one no one's really familiar with it. It's called an NGK AFX, um, and I don't think they actually make them through NGK anymore. There's a couple companies that make them, but it uses this NTK sensor. And the reason um, I chose this wideband is because you can buy these in lab grade. So these are really accurate sensors, more accurate than the Bosch LSU ones, but um, they're kind of expensive, so they're, they're hard to find too. 
So I've had this one for a while, just been sitting in the parts bin. I bought it a while ago to replace the one that's in there. So I'm gonna do a calibration on that today and uh, then I'll go out and do some, some cruise logging on my long-term fuel trims to see how close it is. All right, so that's uh, it for the fuel modifications. I'll do one last video probably once I got all the trims dialed in, but I think right now we're doing good. And uh, all right, bye.